Hey everyone, and welcome back to the VHS Tapes podcast. Today I'm here with Six Foot and guest star AM. What's up, everybody? Salam alaikum. Hey. And today we're discussing more dreams and nightmares. So, who's going to start now? Uh, ladies about... first. Okay, go ahead, Six. <laughs> 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 um so actually well should wait should i actually go first or yeah go ahead all right um i'll because i didn't write this down i'm gonna share this first before i forget it so um i had this dream last night where like where i was just working at a grocery store so i'm like god damn it here we go again <laughs> it's like I, I think it was like the it was basically like within the span of like two hours I was hired given a uniform I met my coworkers and was expected to fucking go out onto the floor and do my job and I'm like I I don't know what I'm doing and then and then I wake up it was just it was just bizarre because the grocery store in my dream looked very little like you know, the one that I go to usually, so. Is that, like, that stuff happens with you guys, too, when you dream. Like, it's a place that you know it's supposed to, like, where it's, like, you're supposed to be, but it's not actually, oh. it doesn't actually resemble. Yeah, yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah that yeah. makes sense. Actually, it reminded me of something. Like, after you finish the story, remind me to tell you about something that um, will actually make this episode a bit more interesting. Now that that's it for me. So like that's it for that story. I mean that dream. Oh, so. that's it. Yeah, you can go ahead with yours. Okay, let me tell you about something that will actually make this um this episode a bit more interesting. So uh, I know this is you guys not are not Muslims as well, but um in Islam we actually view dreams in a bit differently. They dreams are real, but not in the way you think because. When we sleep, our body and our mind, our soul, they go to another dimension. And that dimension is pretty much everything that you see in your dreams happens in it. This is not something made up. It's actually mentioned in Islam. And sometimes, um, there's actually three th- three ways that, um, that dreams work. Either it's, good th- it's a good thing, blessed from God, or it's blessed by Satan, which is bad, or it's just some random thing that's coincides with some events that you have and what makes this more interesting is that when you bring this viewment with science and you know um, astrology and whatever um, astronomy or whatever they call it um, it actually kind of makes sense because there is dimensions like we're in the three third dimension right now like our reality right now and there's the fourth dimension there's the sixth dimension there's the seventh until we go to the eleventh dimension where everything is right so pretty basically our soul our mind basically goes to one of those dimensions which means everything we see in our dreams is real and, and but it takes to another place which also coincides to another thing said in islam which which is basically other worlds which which also makes people theorize that there might be an actual multiverse are you saying, saying the multiverse, multiverse is real? <laughs> <laughs> Man, you're fucking jerk. <laughs> I mean, I mean the, the, the point is that maybe our dreams are real. That's like how it... And it coincides with, with what we see in the real world. Which is something interesting. You guys can admit that, right? Um, uh, say that again, sorry. Um, you guys can admit that this is interesting, right? Yeah, it's pretty interesting. Yeah. So, um, I guess who starts on other dream? Uh, other dream. Uh, Parokis, do you have one or? Uh, yeah, I'll go with the a uh, one that's got a grocery store in it. Right? So this is a regular old dream. Um. I dreamt I was I had to walk to a grocery store, and along the way, I ended up drafted into a battle against aliens with World War II soldiers. 
um, just handed this sheet. He just stood in line, like waiting to enter the building like, a lot of the time, which just seems kind of a stupid way to fight. Um, it's like this dilapidated building, you know, it's falling apart and shit, and they're all in there, and my goal is just going in and just shoot them up. Uh, as my turn was coming up, Robin Williams walks by with a megaphone and just said that this boy smells like he shit his pants. I declare him unfit for duty. Uh, I, then I, <laughs> I sit down next to the director of my actual store, store that I work at, and he just, like, takes my gun, apparently it's jammed, and fixes it, which is apparently what Robin meant to say, what he was trying to say. That was, like, code for his guns jammed. But so... Which makes sense. Yeah. This boy shit his pants is code for his gun is jammed. Yeah. <laughs> I don't I don't I don't get that. It's it's weird, like I just had that sense that okay, that's what that meant. And that applies to a lot of dreams. It's like, like I'll I'll know something you know that like isn't explicitly said to me, it's just I just somehow know the information. <laughs> um while I'm sitting there, my mom texted me and was like, are there any potted sunflowers at the store? And um, I asked the manager, and he's just like, oh, they're in some, you know, they're building a daily, and so I'm like, well, great. So I have to go in there and fight off some aliens to get my mom some sunflowers. <laughs> um, so I went in, I tried to find one and take some videos of the aliens, but I didn't finish. I took them, took them, just became a on my phone, phone and that's all I got for that dream. dream. Maybe this Man. is uh, maybe this is the whole Texans United against Grey Aliens. Maybe this is the <laughs> aliens' revenge on uh, on you. Yeah, and then it was uh, this dream. Well, okay, so, what does Robin Williams have to do with the uh, is fighting a a colonial aliens? No, it wasn't colonial aliens or anything. It was just their... So the aliens there we and were, the United all the, States? All the guys were just like in World War II get up with you know, World War II and weapons for some reason. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. The aliens yeah. just look like your typical like green alien, you know, from like literally everything. Yeah, yeah, generic alien yeah. thingy. So I guess it's my turn. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so do you guys ever have those dreams that have reoccurring aspects? Oh yeah. Yeah. Like places like recurring like settings or characters, if you will, or stuff yep. like that. That's something that is with me, that is happening for with me for years, and it's with one of the most unexpected characters that I've ever freaking had. Have you guys heard of the YouTuber Jaden Animations? Uh, I don't think so. I'll show like a show pic a picture on the screen of uh, who Jaden Animations is. I'm just gonna post a picture and in, in, um, for in the ch in the chat and you will um, know. So basically, um, ever since 2018, I've been seeing freaking J animations in my dreams, and it's always a, a, a different scenario. Like, let me tell you about the first dream I've had. That I freaking know this dream from the back of my mind because of how much I've written it down and he told it to many people. So. It first begins with a field trip. Okay, you know, nothing, no, nothing bad. I'm in the bus with my classmates. Okay, this is the first thing that look, that is really weird about this dream. How the students look like, because they, they keep changing. And the, stu the students, most of them, <laughs> I'm not even joking. Do you guys know Ninja from Fortnite? Yep. All of the students... You guys know Ninja from Fortnite, you know, the YouTuber? Um, yeah, I think so. so. A little bit. All of the students look like Ninja. I don't even remember the details. All of them wore red and blue shirts and had gray hair. Like, only one person looks different. Or, like, it's two persons if you count me. 
one of them is freak is a youtuber you guys i'm not sure if you guys um are are aware from his name is cory x kinshin so we're going to this um <laughs> we're going to this field trip and uh, so you guys know those um what are they what do they call them like paintball um tournaments mm -hmm. we go to that except it's an actual battle royale like they made an actual battle royale for kids nice. uh, yeah and uh, we're, at the world that, that they threw us in like out of nowhere is um it's pretty much a um look it looks like minecraft okay like just imagine a world that is like has small hills and obsidian pillars randomly placed. That's the entire world. Like there is no trees, nothing. It's just a plain, small hilled place with obsidian figures randomly placed on this sky that is pretty much blue with no clouds or anything. Not even the sun was there. Just a blue air, blue, blue sky. <laughs> so we were chosen dreams, jo chosen teams, and all that. And we, of course, we wore vests, uh, black vests, and we had nerf guns that acted as real guns, if I remember correctly. And um, so nobody would actually to get hurt. Um, probably a lot, but um, it didn't matter because we were on a field trip, kid-friendly field trip. On my team, on my team was one of my real-life friends, and Jaden Animations, you know, the YouTuber. Um, it was um her um. As you can see in the picture, it's pretty much her character uh, in her YouTube videos. She was on my team. Unlike in real life where Jane Animations is a really nice person, he was a complete jerk in here. And one of the weirdest things ever that in this map, there are buildings, um, despite there being literally nothing other than obsidian pillars in the world, there was literally nothing, there was literally buildings, like, and what made it weirder is that it mo it's modeled after one of the rooms, one of the rooms in my own house that I still even live in. But the ground is made of steep rock that is very sharp and very like bad. So I entered to one of those rooms, and I fell. I fell down. I damaged my my knees and my um my body. And my friend and Jaden were there. They saw me. My friend helped me, but Jade didn't give a frick. They just she just looked at me with a straight angry face and just walked off. My fr I'm just it it all it uh, very much um surprised me a lot in the dream and my friend was pretty helpful in this case, like like he was he would be in real life. Now the round the round ended. All the students going in. The the main area where we all like gather up before the um you know before the round looks a lot like a large airport. And I remember specifically the teacher himself that brought us here. It's freaking Donald Trump. Nice. Yeah, Donald Trump, you know, the what the pres the former president. He was our teacher and he was like, Hey guys, how is it going? I hope you all enjoyed or something and Jaden was there, and so was my friend, the other students who looked like ninja for some reason. She looked at me like this angry face. I don't know why, but that that was pretty much it for the dream. But it doesn't end here. This was back in 2018, and at this time, at this period, I didn't like Jaden simply because at the time I didn't like the color purple. So I always assumed like, eh, hey, Jaden, she's like spurable, she's probably a dignitant or whatever. But this dream actually kind of made me watch one Jaden video and she immediately, and I immediately became a fan. Nowadays I'm still a fan, but um, I don't watch most of her videos every time. But she kept appearing in my dreams. Every year, there's at least one dream I see her in. The, my second dream, I remember, um, I was also like in my in an area with bosses in school, but this time it was Jaden who was the teacher who was like willing to help students get to their homes safely. And the third dream had me coming back from a trip in an airport. 
This time, I saw Jaden not in her animation look, but in her real world appearance. And she was completely friendly. Like, she sat next to me, we became friends, we shared what we like in common, what we like about art and stuff like that. Even after we got out of the plane, we were still friends. We looked at each other, we smiled. We were good friends, we were best friends at this point. Then came the fourth dream, which I don't honestly remember that much from, but I'll tell you about the other dreams. I, there was this one uh, dream where I saw Jaden's, uh, Jaden on Jaden's Instagram, where she would, at this point in time, by the way, for context, I did not really, I was starting to drop out of my Jaden, like, I wasn't a big fan. I, I think this dream was like last year because I wasn't like a big Jaden fan at the time. But in this dream, guess what? I see her Instagram stories. I actually follow her on Instagram, by the way. And she just make mocking fans, not mocking fans, but like scolding haters who hate her and make disgusting fan art of her, fan art of her, of how much they hate her. She's just scolding them, like saying up how disgusting they are and all that. When I woke up, I was really thinking about what if I should become a Jaden fan next time. Last time I um, dreamed of Jaden was actually a few days ago. Where, where, guess what, in the Hello Guido server, she was in that server, and she was just, like, she didn't talk in it, but she was commonly active, ghosting people, and, like, so pretty much like Jack Evans if he was nice, and the, and the girl. Mm. And that, what do you guys think? Interesting. This person must be a Jack Evans variant. Yeah, probably. J Jaden is, is probably a Jack Evans um, alt, I guess, real world alt that won't leave me alone. It even became like a little, um, what do I call it? Like a, an inside joke between me and my friend that Jaden is obsessed with me. And she wants to appear in my dreams no matter what. And she wants to become friends with me in real life. Like she's just full on yandere on me. Sounds like you two need to meet up and uh, share dreams, if you know what I mean. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so since you mentioned Fortnite in that, I have one that had a Fortnite element in it. Uh, is this our first nightmare, then? No. <laughs> no, we'll get to the nightmares probably much later. <laughs> um... So I had a dream where I went to work, and I guess somebody asked me for something because I had to get something from the basement, which is funny because we don't have one. Uh, so I went in the back room into an elevator, which also does not exist. And I went down to some maintenance floor, and there was some crazy guy there that uh, flipped over a railing and fell three stories down flat on his face. <laughs> um... I rushed down to him, and some paramedics were conveniently there. He was perfectly fine. He was just uh, mentioning, like, he wanted some sweet powder that he liked, so I, he must be on drugs or something. Um, I ended up, I guess I got the item or whatever. I went back up, back up to the main floor, came out, and it was supposed to be my grocery store, but there was stuff there that we don't have, like, I found my parents sitting at, like, a patio table that was, like, set up to be on display. And my mom was, like, kind of aggravated with me, like, what took what took me so long. And, like, I explained the whole scenario. And um, uh, my dad decided to buy me some Fortnite skins to calm my nerves. And I, <laughs> I told him he was just making it worse. So... I just, like, I, the dream wasn't really that interesting up until the point at the end there. I just thought that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's kids. Can't be but, you, son. But yeah, it was, the way it went, you know, I had, like I said, I had told the story. My parents saw I was like, distraught from what I had just witnessed. And my my dad had just handed me a card and, like, 
it had some Fortnite skins that were deemed on it. And I was just like, <laughs> as soon as I got it, I was like, Dad, you're, you're not making this anymore. And I, I don't remember anymore. The dream just ended there, basically. <laughs> you have no idea how much I'm trying to hold back on my laugh right now. <laughs> This is gold, Herokes. This is gold. <laughs> Even if it's not that funny, it's gold. Alright, Six, you got one? Yeah. Um. So, it was like, I know we were, we were, a few nights ago, we were discussing, like, doing this episode and, like, getting it together and all that. Um. And at that time, I was like, uh, I, I don't have a ton of material, but I'll, like, I'm sure between now and then I'll come up, like, I'll have something. Yeah, my brain really came through, and uh, basically, I and it was like as soon as I woke up, I wrote them all down because well, the last one woke me up, and I'll get to that later in the episode. Uh huh. Um, like it's it's a dream where it's like it's shocking enough that it just kind of wake like it just wakes you up. Not necessarily a nightmare, but but anyway. So the first one was very uneventful, but it was just for some reason. Uh, I like I don't live in a townhouse, but in this fucking scenario, I either I did or I was I don't know if I was supposed to be visiting somebody or and it was just like very dimly lit, like those fucking photos from like the nineties or the or you know early two thousands or whatever. Those fucking like grainy quality photos where the lights dim and you know there's probably some fat fuck on a computer like that type of setting. And. <clears throat> And it's like in this, you know, I'm in the basement, which looks a little bit like my own basement at this point, but there's a kitchen, and for some reason, my boss from my old job was there, and like, we hadn't seen each other in years, so it's just like, he's, I don't know, he's doing something, he's cleaning, or he's making food, or whatever, and it was just like, it's just, hey, how are you doing? And we're just catching up, and, uh... At, and it's like, it was just kind of like, oh, we're at work again. But yeah, that was like the least eventful one. So, uh, yeah. Anybody else got yeah. one in the meantime? Um, oh yeah, I have actually one dr one dream that uh, I even uh, wrote down like a um, a sketch for what I saw in the dream, which is interesting. And I actually remember. The moment I got up, I actually wrote the entire dream down. Well, not an ex. Wait, um, if I think remember, it was hours later, I actually wrote down the um, dream, but I still remember it. I don't know if I would consider this a nightmare or not, because I was. I felt the emotion of being scared in the, in the, in the dream. And you will see why. It wasn't like a. A dream that immediately made me woke, wake up because I was afraid. Okay, so um, I had this dream last night where I saw a leak of... Hell. So you guys know how this is a, an upcoming Batgirl movie? Uh, Another one? <laughs> yeah, there's a Batgirl movie coming out like um, on HBO Max. Oh, uh, in that case, it's probably going to suck. <laughs> okay. So, um, from what we know, that this movie is gonna be uh, based on a comic, which I absolutely hate. It's called Bad Girl Year One because it establishes Killer Moth as a loser villain, and it establishes Firefly as a one-dimensional bad rash kind of character, or whatever. So this is the, this happened to me a dream where I saw like a I received the vision of the future of how this movie would be like. And this is a part of the dream, so um, I will um, say it. I had this dream. I had this le night dream last night where I saw a leak of how Killer Moth will be portrayed in the new Batgirl movie. Basically, it shared to me on a big screen of a clip that shows Killer Moth in complete costume, a dirty one, living on the streets, basically a hobo and a stupid one. Legit acted like he was playing basketball on the streets. And that's pretty much his introduction scene. He's also surrounded by other hobos who wear dirty colorful costumes too. Oh, and yeah, that's the first part of the dream. It's pretty weird. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the second part is where stuff gets real. It has 
I'm telling you, it has nothing to do with this freaking killer moth plotline, plot okay? <laughs> okay, so, um, it was about 8 a.m. It's getting late. So me and me and my family in the car were going back home from shopping. I was angry that we were late at night, and you could say I was also angry about that killer moth leak. I kept looking at, at it. I saw this small plane in the sky. I kept looking at it. Then I looked away. My city wasn't like how it actually looks like in real life. Instead, it looked like a mix between a medieval desert village and a modern day Iraqi city. There were a lot of empty spaces between houses and streets. Then I see the plane. It seemed bigger. And then I realized it was coming in and crashing far away. And it did. I wasn't aware of it. I wasn't aware if what it was until I saw it in front of me on the streets. The plane stuck on top of a building. The building was basically the Jedi Temple. The plane was crashed on top of it. And I even drove down and the scene that I saw because I thought it looks visually um, interesting. I'm gonna show this during the video and you will um, get what I what I saw. The building, no, no. Um, I was so scared to get near it because it didn't collapse. It was just there. But we did anyway. We get we got near it on the car. It was a really realistic dream that scared me, and it was freaking huge as hell. Like we don't even have these big structures in where I live. Then I woke up. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I've, had, I've had dreams before where it was like there be, might be buildings or areas that I've gone through, and there's modifications to them, and sometimes the modifications are. Something that's recurring as well. Interesting. Another interesting aspect is that um, I'm not sure if I knew this before, but in Iraq, we actually have a structure that looks like the Jedi Temple. And I will share it here because um, you can show this on the video too, on the podcast, on the episode two, because it looks like the Jedi Temple. It looks, it looks a lot like the structure that I saw in the freaking dream. And I didn't even know this structure existed when I saw that dream. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, it looks. Yeah, I mean, it looks more like what you saw in your dream than it does the Jedi Temple. I think. Yeah. Interesting. Could have been something that maybe you had seen before, but like just didn't realize it was there. Yeah, I feel like um that um. And I, I always liked the Jedi Temple, like how it looked like. And I was always always loved the um, architecture in uh, Middle Eastern countries, you know, with how they make stuff out of deserts and make everything look like palaces. I think my uh, my brain, or at least the whatever dimension my brain got, went to combine those two aspects that I like randomly, the Jedi Temple and Arabian desert architecture into one thing and that was pretty much how it, how it um, meant. And also, Iraq is full of out of cool stuff. Like, have you even seen what the hell they do build there? They have a freaking structure that is that are two swords to shit that look like a gate. They they do really cool stuff there. Hmm. I mean, I know there's like uh, like there's some like Middle Eastern inspired you know, settings or architecture in Star Wars, like pretty much anything on Tatooine, for instance. Yeah, I, I know that. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure there's um, a lot more, but that's just like what comes to mind right away. Yeah, one thing I also want to add to the Jaden dream that I forgot to mention, it's just a small minor thing, but if you would tell me I'd, or bring me to anyone I would like to meet, who is alive, of course, and uh, there's other people in history that I would like to meet the most. But if you, like, specifically say someone who is alive right now, I would say Jaden. So I can see what the hell this 
the, all those dreams are because this is just normal like you have no idea how many times I've seen Jaden in my dreams. My mind always like thrashes through how many times I've seen her in my dreams. Sometimes it's seven, sometimes it's eight, sometimes it even goes as far as fourteen times. Hmm. So I'm gonna list off uh, two short ones. Um, I had some dream that. It looked like a segment out of The uh, Last of Us. It was some zombie apocalypse going on, and I was trying to trade these special tree branches to save my dad's life. And, like, that's... It was pretty much the whole dream. <laughs> and <it was> just... <laughs> okay, so I guess uh, I'm going to also um, share a small dream, and then you'll continue. Is that okay? <clears throat> And let me see. The other one, uh, it was a dream about, like, I don't know if I was, like, playing Red Dead 2 or just uh, it was dreaming about it, but uh, there were random characters at the camp. Um, Dutch was literally a parody of himself. <laughs> and then there was some enemy that we were trying to get away from, and, like, the guy that was with Arthur just, like, had this idea that was like, well, what if we get naked while we're running? He won't be able to track <laughs> us. And Arthur just basically went, okay. And they just did it, and somehow this, you know, the enemy just couldn't see us once everyone was naked. <laughs> I swear to God, Heroic is the last time you, you guys recorded the dream episode, you said you went to the hospital and took a shower while naked. What? Why, does, why do I feel like me, um, being naked is uh, like a reoccurring thing in your dreams? Wait, what, what, what was that about a shower? I um, remember that, um, I remember in the... For, First time you guys made it a po an episode about dreams, you said that there was one dream that you went to that previous hospital you worked in, met one oh, of the people. Oh, you... right, yeah, yeah. It, it was. A, it didn't make it, any. It never made any sense because like there's not a shower there to begin with. And yeah, I was um, <laughs> wondering. Why I was uh, that cut got on my um. Your that reminded me of it. Yeah. This this isn't my next one, but I just want to add on to so yeah, it was well especially when I was like a like a really young kid like maybe preschool or whatever aged, it was almost like a recurring like thing, where it would be like I'd be in class and it's like you know, and it's just at a certain point I'm just my pants are gone, and it's uh, just, like it's it's just embarrassing you know that's it, yeah it casually. Well, Pants disappears. Like, like I, I'm, like at the beginning of the dream, I'm wearing pants, but it's like you know the class is kind of gathered around, like the teacher is like reading something or whatever. Again, this was like kindergarten or whatever. So, and then it's like I just stand up and then my pants are gone or something like that. <laughs> Maybe Venom, shut up your, sh shut up your um pants away. Like when you received that gift at the last time. Um, Dream episode. Episode. Did I share that already? Well, no, no, no. But um, you, you reminded me of this uh, dream Venom shared where um, oh. he received guns and started to shot people's socks off or something. But yeah, I guess it's my turn. Uh, All right. I think so. First. I will share. Okay, I will share two dreams. One that is pretty small, and the other is kind of long. The first one is um. So I was in my school, the one I go to now, and I will graduate from it soon. Um, it's this dream. So there was a a weird event that happened when I was young at that school. A sandstorm hit, sweeped the entire city. Like, it was pitch red, this, 
you couldn't see uh, like a lot of what of what was happening from a mere distance and it was really disastrous for us because we were kept inside the school for hours it was i think it was almost night i don't know i don't think it was almost night um but yeah we were kept in the school for a lot of time that um when when it was when time came for us to like go back to our home so this i saw this in my dream a sandstorm hits my freaking city and we were forced to be kept in the school but there's one minor thing movie sonic was my classmate <laughs> I'm just, okay um now i need the to be specific the, movie, the one we got in the movie or ugly sonic <laughs> thankfully the one we got in the movie if if i freaking saw jack evans in my dream it will be a nightmare at this point Anyway, so yeah, so yeah, that's pretty much it. I dream. So movie Sonic was um my classmate. He was um pretty friendly, and he sat on a table. And yeah, one thing that I found interesting that this actually came after I watched the first Sonic movie. So I guess it's a bit constant with what I like the most at the time. So that's nice. Now, the second dream. That I feel is pretty surreal and it's a big, it's actually a lucid dream. You guys know what those are? Yeah, I, I've been, well, been wanting to do it for years, but never just, never seriously tried to like attempt it, I guess. This dream that I saw made me want to get more lucid dreams. But nowadays I don't want lucid dreams because they'll end up. N- I fear that they will end up nightmares, which is more terrifying if you think about it. So, this begins with me at a fancy restaurant. It looks French in its um, layout. There's a big crowd. And there is this, I actually, so if you guys don't know, I actually write a lot of fictional stories. Fictional as in... um, you know, stuff I come up in my mind, you know, story, a series I have, yada, 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 you, know, you get what I mean. This, this dream was, was so surreal, yet realistic, that I actually include, wrote it down at, as a scene for one story. So, which is how I, rem- I still remember it. So, I was in this, in this French-styled restaurant, and with a big crowd. They were all watching this trickster. He's like a famous trickster. He came to visit. And um, he had this other guy from the crowd. He was an old man, I assume. And he told him. Um, and he did, you know, stuff, you know, as a trickster said. Then he cracks a water bottle on his palm. Like on the old man's palm on his hand. Everyone was shocked because, of course, it's a violent thing. And, but the trickster laughed. It was like nothing to him. And I thought to myself, how is this allowed? Like, how is this guy famous? <laughs> I, yeah, I was traumatized. I, wa- I got up my fist. I wanted to punch the trickster. But then another old man told me to calm down. He will get what he deserves soon. So don't even bother. Be patient. Then I was like, okay, sorry about that. I just can't help it. Then I actually um went outside, exited the restaurant, and holy crap, this is probably the most beautiful dream I've ever seen. Because it was literally like out of an old Disney movie, the city was glorious, it was shiny, the, the night sky was beautiful, it was not scary, people on the streets, it was beautiful, like, I can't even describe it, My the word, the, what I'm saying right now doesn't do it any justification, it was beautiful, you know, I, I, this, the streets I was walking in weren't like car streets. I was just walking to streets for horses and crowds and whatnot. So I pretty much like walked on the street. 
It was, I described it here as walking down the long streets during the evening along the tall buildings. The glory of the towering heights can't beat the beauty of the city of Amman and its neon lights and gothic architecture. Suddenly, one of uh, Ahem's friends come by. And yeah, this is actually like, this is actually where some real world people come and make a camera. My friends, not Jaden, she doesn't appear at all in this movie, uh, this um, dream, thank God. But yeah, those, those friends I actually recognize, they're real people, which I actually thought was pretty neat. They came by, they made my mood better, like, they, they, they obviously came back from shopping, and, you know, they were asking me about my mood, and I um, was like, uh, I, to I told them about my experience with Timothy, uh, I like she called him Timothy, the trickster, but, um, he, he was just called the trickster, I told them what happened, and they were also upset, but they tried to make my mood better, and we, and, Interestingly enough, they mentioned someone famous. I don't know if they were specifically saying me, Jaden, or someone else. They say that there's a person who is famous and has a lot of fans. And that person marches down the streets with their fans and smiles. But then, Timothy comes by. He marches down with his fans, down the street, smiling, as if the harm he did to that old man wasn't... Like, he, he acted like nothing happened, his fans acted like nothing was happened, they were, they were just walking down the streets, he's a famous person, celebrity man, you know, a paparazzi, you know. And those, my friends, they don't want to upset me, they said... Don't be upset. You, there's a famous person. I don't know what the famous person is, but is fa they're famous. I don't know if it's supposed to be me or Jaden or someone else. All I know is that there's a celebrity, and that person is famous. And unlike Trickster, he's a good guy. Then I actually entered to like a a small like you know you know detail how he has his um. Computer setups, shop, or whatever. Yeah, it's some, it kind of reminded me of that now. now, It's a shop with computer parts and all that. It was a neat, small setup. It was nothing special. Then I woke up. Hmm. I love this dream, man. And I have no idea if it means something. I clearly witnessed something harmful. And I'm, there has been stuff that um, in recent, in recent day, the recent two years, there has been stuff that was pretty harmful, that's some personal stuff, of course, but it coincides perfectly with what, what I see in the dream. Well, it doesn't represent it perfectly, like there's no trickster breaking down um, an old man's palm or something with a bottle. But um, we've also been like, getting tr in trouble with SAT exams, like what I told you earlier. And the, the something about this celebrity that my friends tried to make a good mood out of me. Like, my friends in real life also tried to make a good mood out of me. I remember this one theater thing. Um, there was, like, someone who was telling us to, um, like, telling everyone at the theater to, like, <laughs> write down the word things that the worst aspects of you and that actually kind of got me depressed because writing down the worst things in that that's ever in my um, life that's happening in for me personally then one of my friends behind me he get, he took that paper wrote it down you are the best of hearts to me so that coincides also with the dream that my friends are also helpful and then there was the aspects of the celebrity like there's some uh, there's a celebrity out there i don't know who it is i don't know if they were even talking about me in the future or something but um what makes this aspect more interesting is that a person in my family i won't tell who it is for privacy sake but they said they saw a dream of me 
becoming the best, one of the best men ever, and making my family proud. Because this is like one of the more interesting dreams I've ever had. I've ever had because I, I think it like t- also tells about my um, experience um, and in, in my life in the future. Because another aspect that I find interesting is that I'm a very fancy man. You know, I, all the art I do is also very fancy. I always like stuff fancy, and that this dream was pretty fancy. And I have and I had absolute control of myself in the dream. So what do you guys think? Interesting. Yeah, it's... I mean, it's... Uh, wow, what was I going to say? It's... Um, yeah, when it's like... You know, I, I, yeah, I've read stories of, you know, people having dreams that... I don't know if overlap is the right word, but or it's like they just kind of relate to each other somehow, for better or for worse. Like, in some... <clears throat> like, the ones I've read about are like, you know... Let's say let's say a boy dreams about you know, let's say like his grandfather visits and gives him some crypt you know cryptic message and then, you know the next morning he finds out his grandfather died, and then and then it's like somebody else in the family is like oh I had a very similar dream, but it's like no like no explanation or anything like that. Yeah. Um. Right. Um. The the last two years up. A family member in our family died, and it was pretty devastated. Like we had an actual Uncle Ben situation where um Aunt May literally like then Aunt May and Peter literally go broke, and they have to find like whatever spare parts they have to um you know to live on about. And we are not that bad, but it's similar situation. But um I've been seeing that family relative. In my dreams a lot. I won't say all the stuff because also privacy. But also other family members are also seeing the same thing. But um, one dream I actually find pretty um, weird is um, uh, uh, which is I um, mean it's a it's a short one. Um, it's my um my rel- my um passed away relative um was in it. It was me entering Iraq with a helicopter. For some reason, the borders look like they are I'm entering Area 51. I don't know why, but I know Iraq isn't the safest country ever. We had like a lot of crises in the last a few decades, but come on, it's not Area 51. <laughs> and the, the weirdest thing ever is that there's a large active mall near the borders that was like Area 51. It has it's very huge. The rooms are huge, and it looks so. Not old fashioned, but like um, it looks like a mall, but um, the stuff in it are disorganized and stuff like that. Despite it being a large block and like near the freaking desert, then near the borders, it's it's a weird it's a weird dream. Wait, so you're saying Area Fifty One looks like a shopping mall? Uh, well, no, no, it's it's in Area Fifty One. There's a giant mall. It's <laughs> disorganized and active. And it's also in Iraq for some reason. Maybe, maybe it's just a shopping mall for aliens or whatever. Hmm, yeah, probably. That's That may be where Saddam Hussein went after he supposedly died. <laughs> yeah, so the second part of my dream from the other night, so... Um... I don't know what I was watching. Like, I just, I'm just looking at my note here. It just says, uh, I was watching, like, when I was right, when I wrote all this down, I was like frantically trying to write it all down after I woke up. Apparently, I was watching the first episode of this new, it was either like this new Marvel show or maybe like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. or something. Like, there was a new season or a season I haven't seen. And it was like, and we see fucking Gore the God Butcher from Thor Love and Thunder that at this time <laughs> hasn't come out yet. Like apparently he was a character he was supposed to be a character in that like way before <laughs> fucking Thor. And uh, <laughs> so it's like the opening shot is Gore, like when he's looking like more normal, less like Jack Evans. Uh <laughs> and, he, and he has two henchmen just walking beside him and um and for some reason, he doesn't have a nose, so he looks kind of like Voldemort, too. Um, uh, so, like, that was the opening, and then the next thing I remember is, like, it's almost like fucking... 
the like the scene after a commercial break. It's like for some reason the fucking Emperor's throne room from Star Wars just starts playing, and it's like a, sh- a shot of fucking London or Naboo or whatever the hell. And it's like we just see this fucking random turtle that's just on the street just transform into a I don't know some gigantic creature. What the hell? while the Emperor's throne room thing theme is playing, and it's like in fucking mar- typical Marvel fashion, it's like gr- wide shots panning, you know, all that fucking special effects bullshit. <laughs> Man, what kind of comic book adaptation is called? Because I want to read that comic book if it's real. Yeah, it's called the Six Foot Chronicles. I'm gonna read that eventually. You know what? I'm not even gonna read it online. I'm ordering. It. I'm ordering it from Amazon. All right, we've been talking about this shit for about an hour, so we're gonna wrap it up here, and we'll have a second part coming out, maybe in a few weeks. So see you guys then. See so yeah, and let us and uh, let us know in the comments uh, what you guys thought of our dreams. Also, tell me if you saw Jaden animations in your dream, please.